This is Janek Moravian Church in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. This Protestant congregation has been worshiping here in this very spot since 1762. My great-great-great-great-great-great-great-grandfather, George Cluel, along with his brother, Franz, and others, helped found this congregation. However, this is not where the story begins. The story told often starts with Francois and Louisa Cluel, persecuted French Huguenots who got married and raised two sons in Germany. After Francois died, Louisa wanted a better life for her family. She and her two sons, Franz and George, came to this country in 1737 from Europe and landed in Philadelphia. And from Philadelphia, they made their way up to this area. Boys grew up and uh, married and had children and settled elsewhere in the Bushkill Township here. Um, yeah, there was not always good blood between the German settlers and the English settlers. Um, in this area, because they mostly came from those parts of Europe, Lutheran or Reformed. So how then did the Cluels, who were French Huguenots, get connected with the Moravian Church in colonial Pennsylvania? With uh, uh, Conrad Rice and John Vidal, two members of our Cluel family, a lot of people have no idea about our family's connection to the Moravian Church, and even more so, just exactly what is a Moravian. We trace our roots back to John Huss, and we're talking now five to six hundred years ago, and we're talking about the Czech Republic. He was um, instrumental in leading a reform movement against the Catholic Church, and they subsequently broke away from the Catholic Church and migrated into Germany. A man by the name of Nicholas von Zinzendorf, Count von Zinzendorf, became a benefactor to this movement. This church, early church, sent out missionaries various parts of the world. My great, 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 great grandfather, grandparents, were, uh, well, first uh, wave to uh, South America. Everybody should get the idea after this is that the Moravian Church is a Protestant denomination, mm -hmm. and very, very early, uh, as a matter of fact, John Huss preceded Martin Luther, so uh, we're not just mm -hmm. some wild sect, right. you know, from out in left field. When the Cluel families moved their homesteads in Upper Nazareth, they began searching for a minister because there were no churches near enough to travel to. So the, the people got together and sent letters to both the Lutherans and the Reformed and said, could you send us somebody to come and preach occasionally? Not, not every week, but just preach occasionally in the German language. And the Lutherans said, you know, we only have one or two people in the area, we don't have anybody. So then they sent a letter to the Moravians. Now the Moravians were about a mile away, and they said, we want somebody to come and preach to us um, in the German language. And the Moravians figured, well, oh, we've got some people not too far away, so they said they would. Um, and there is a copy of that letter um, which exists. It's in the Moravian archives in Bethlehem. But there's a book that was published about the congregation, so that, that letter is published in that book. So they started, they sent a pastor uh, up to this area, started meeting in someone's house, and, and they invited people from the neighboring farms to come and listen, and they did. And eventually they outgrew the house, and after a couple of years they said, you know, we really, we really need a building. What's very fascinating about the Shenek Moravian Church is that there is another Moravian church no further than a mile away in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. The reason that there is a church north of Nazareth and a church in Nazareth, only a mile apart, that doesn't happen very often. The one in Nazareth was, a Nazareth was a closed community. You could only live inside the boundaries of Nazareth if you were a member of the Arabian church. Um, and you had to subscribe to that communal lifestyle until the mid 1800s. So there was a building built where all of the unmarried men lived together. They were there. There was another separate building for all of the unmarried women of, of whatever age. Um, for a while, married couples and families didn't live together. 
Um, now, eventually, as as the economy changed um, and things worked out, they <clears throat> they abandoned that. The people up here did not live in that way. They didn't live all together. They lived on their own farms, like like you would think. So the, the Moravians called that a preaching place. So this was a preaching place where anybody from the neighborhood could go, whether they started out Moravian or not, whether they subscribed to the Moravian rules, they could come to church here. Um, the people in town all lived together, all subscribed to certain economic rules, um, and that was there. But when they, when they opened up, this, this church, well, this church eventually became a Moravian church, but it was still a preaching place. Um, and this, this church has continued as well as that church has continued. So they, um, there hasn't been any reason to merge them or um, to close one of them so far. They, they both have their own separate, separate reasons for being. And so that's why there are two Moravian churches very close together. The, the Shenna congregation, um, we, we now say it, it used to be a family church. It used to be the congregation really that the, that the Cole family was very active in. And now as, as sort of um, membership has expanded a little bit, now it's a church family. We care about each other, you know, in 260 years or so, we would expect things would change. The Kluwels have always donated their time and money to the Shenek Moravian Church. Some of the donations include items such as the second original Shenek Moravian Church Register. It contains the recorded death, birth, and marriage dates of the members of the congregation. Both the first and second registers were restored by the Cluel Family Association in 2007. In 1981, um, our, uh, one of our family members for the Cluel family donated a three octave set of handbells to the church in memory of Harry J. and Barry L. Cluel. For any unique traditions that the Moravians have that are different from, let's say, Baptists or Presbyterians or Methodists. The Moravian star is the biggie. Everybody recognizes the Moravian star today. You see it in Hobby Lobbies, for goodness sakes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but that originated in Germany, in Herndon. And uh, it grew, you know, from a paper star into what you see today, plastics, metals, whatever, glass, you, you name it. One of the traditions the Moravians practice and I have participated in is called a love feast. The love feast is a special church service where the congregation shares in drinks and pastries. I'm disappointed you guys never even mentioned the word love feast. Where, where does that tradition come from? There was a, a gathering. With Count Zinzendorf, right? With Count Zinzendorf. And this was in a period that John had mentioned where there was a lot of turmoil going on amongst themselves living on. Zinzendorf, by the way, was a Lutheran. Right. He was not a Moravian, but he learned from what he had learned about the Moravians to admire them and their, their beliefs. But there was infighting. Some didn't want to be there, some back and forth. And they sat down for a, a meeting to tire out their differences. And this is where the love feast came to being. They they. They were bickering among themselves of where they wanted to proceed. And uh, they were meeting so long that they went clear through their dinner hours or whatever. So Zinzendorf brought in food for them to partake while they, rather than break up the meeting and stop where they were, they continued meeting and they brought in food so they could continue their dialogue with their, you know, what they were discussing. Throughout the centuries, Moravians have forever enhanced the fabric of this country and Clovels have been indispensably linked. Moravian influences are perhaps no more so apparent than during the holiday season in Pennsylvania to this day. And even here in the little town in Nazareth, many homes had, had their puts set up at Christmas time and then open up their house for people to come in and see. Even carried on today, Central Moravian in, in Bethlehem still erects their puts every year and has open house because they come in by the bus loads to tour Bethlehem. And that is the story of the Cluels and Moravians in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. I invite you to come explore your Cluel heritage in Pennsylvania and throughout America.